Do you hate it when you misplace your keys or when you walk into a room and you forget why you walked in there? Well, researchers have come up with a solution to that problem and all it takes is a little bit of brain surgery. I'm Zach, this is Zach DTV, and we're gonna take a look at this. In a paper published in the Journal of Neuroengineering, researchers from the Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center and the University of Southern California announced their breakthrough on the DARPA-funded RAM project. In this case, RAM stands for Restoring Active Memory, and it was launched by DARPA back in 2013. The goal of the RAM program is to help restore memory in people who've been through debilitating injuries, people who were in car accidents, um, military coming back from overseas with injuries. They want to help epileptics and people with Alzheimer's, all those other diseases too that can cause a decrease in your ability to remember what's going on in the world around you. The researchers in this group were focusing on what's called episodic memory. That's the stuff you only need to remember for a little bit of time, like where you put your car keys, you know, or what you ate for breakfast, or things like that. The little things that don't take actual learning, like what you learn in school, which is known as a reference memory. And they decided to focus on that type of memory because it is the most common memory loss in people with brain damage and Alzheimer's. And it's the memory that you really need to function in your day-to-day -day existence. For this trial, the researchers enrolled 15 patients that already had surgically implanted electrodes in their brain. These were patients suffering from epilepsy and they are using these electrodes to do a brain mapping to try to figure out where their seizures originated at. So how the project works is they took extremely precise recordings of the neural patterns that were displayed when a person was looking at an image on screen. And these images were extremely simple, like a colored block. It wasn't anything meant to trick you, just to see where that memory was stored, what was activated. Then after a few seconds, the screen would go black, five images would pop up. And again, they would record the neural activity to see what happened when the person got it right and what happened when the person got it wrong. And they were able to find the differences in these brain patterns. So they analyzed the recordings from the correct responses and basically wrote a program that could mimic those electrical impulses. So then in the second part of the test, when they were having the patient recall the block they had seen previously, they would fire those electrical signals into the hippocampus and it would improve the test subject's ability to recall the object they were looking for by 37%. Now that first round of testing lasted 120 seconds. In the second test, there's actually 75 minutes between the time when the screen went blank and when they're asked to pick what image they'd seen previously. Using the same technique to stimulate the hippocampus again, patients being asked to recall what image they saw 75 minutes after they saw it had an improved success rate of 35%. So you're only looking at a 2% drop off there on a test that was an hour and 15 minutes longer. Now these results are phenomenal. And according to Professor Robert Hampson, he was a lead on this project, we showed that we could tap into a patient's own memory content, reinforce it, and feed it back to the patient. Even when a person's memory is impaired, it is possible to identify the neural firing patterns that indicate correct memory formation and separate them from the patterns that are incorrect. We can then feed in the correct patterns to assist the patient's brain in accurately forming new memories, not as a replacement for innate memory function, but as a boost to it. In the future, we hope to be able to help people hold on to specific memories, such as where they live or what their grandkids look like, when their overall memory begins to fail. While this is proof of concept work, it is now a proven concept in human beings. There's no word on how long it will take before this becomes publicly available, but I have a feeling we could be seeing these installed in humans within the next 10 years. So now my question to you, if the procedure was safe, would you be willing to get an electronic implant inside your brain to help boost your memory by nearly 40%? Or do you think you're good enough the way you're made? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with your friends and hit that like button. That way you know when I put out something new. My videos are out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so I hope to see you here again soon. And until next time, just have fun and be safe.